Hello, I'm Morgan from How To Celiac and today we're going to be chatting about some of the more nuanced parts of being a celiac. The ones you wouldn't necessarily talk to a doctor about or your mum, but you're going to talk about it with me. And just to hear someone chat about the aspects of having a gut related disease that you might find embarrassing or at least awkward to bring up with people who don't understand celiac disease. Our topics today will cover awkward symptoms, dating, boundaries, flatting and the general coming to terms with having celiac disease. So first, let's talk about some of the fun symptoms that we don't often bring up at the dinner table. Flatulence and bowel movements. According to Celiac NZ, flatulence or farting and abdominal distension are very common symptoms of celiac disease. And oh boy, can I attest to that? I'm gonna be honest with you. My farts were the worst. And it's taken me a long time to come to terms with that. <laughs> For a long time I lived in denial and just thought everyone's farts were the worst, but it, it turned out mine were really the worst. So why does this happen? According to the NHS, smelly or excessive farting can occur when you're eating foods that are difficult to digest. And if there's anyone having difficulties digesting foods, it's undiagnosed celiacs. In terms of bowel movements, diarrhea and constipation are also another common symptom of celiac disease. But you might not have experienced that at all, or you might have experienced just one, or if you're like me, both. The reason why I personally think that diarrhea, constipation, farting is so important to talk about is because it was the only indication for me that I had that anything was wrong in my gut. But in saying that, it's not like one day all of these symptoms just cropped up at once. Oh no 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 no. It took me years. I'm estimating about five to seven years before I eventually plucked up the courage to go see a doctor about it. And the reason why I didn't see a doctor earlier was because I'd never actually had a conversation about poop until I got to university. University. I had no idea that the symptoms I were experiencing was anything odd. Especially if you think about it, the only things that you really hear about people talking about their poop is if they've had to sit on the toilet for 45 minutes or haven't pooped in a week. So that's why I thought those things were normal and why I didn't see a doctor about it. Nowadays, if anyone even mentions the slightest irregularity in their bowel movements, I'm telling them to see a doctor straight away. <laughs> For me, pooping is a huge indicator of what's going on in my gut. Prior to diagnosis, I just had constant diarrhea or constipation with no in-between for about five years. But now I can tell what my happy bowel movements look like. And it also gives me a good indicator of when I've been glutened as well. Perhaps you as well would have noticed an improvement in your bowel movements since being diagnosed and have a fair idea of what your healthy stool looks like. But if you don't, here's a chart. This one's me. Anyway, I think that's enough about poop. Let's talk about dating. You might be thinking, what the heck's dating got to do with celiac disease? Well, I'm assuming at some point, probably early on in the dating stage, you're gonna go out for food to eat. And some people find that difficult to navigate. A few questions that I see pop up are, how can I not come off as a picky eater? Or how do I not make it all about my dietary requirements? Basically, the vibe is around not wanting to be off-putting to a potential suitor. And I have some thoughts about this. Firstly, if you're on a date and the person you're with makes fun of you for being a picky or fussy eater after you've explained to them that you've got celiac disease, then that's a great indicator that they're not the one. I say after you've explained why you can't eat gluten because some people might not understand straight off the bat or have been misinformed prior to meeting you and end up saying something like, can't you just try a little bit? But if they're open to learning and listening to what you have to say, then I think that's still okay. However, if you have explained and they're still being a dick about it, well... Secondly, some people feel anxious about making it all about their dietary requirements, which is understandable when you're trying to make a good first, second or third impression. And honestly, that's fair enough. It does take time to be able to gain the confidence to put your needs first. It's also helpful to remember that I don't think there is any date that you can go on that's worth being glutened over. But there's no secret potion to gaining the confidence that you need to do this. It's just learning and practice and having your own personal boundaries put in place. Now let's talk about personal boundaries for a bit because I think they're extremely important in all of these topics that we're going to talk about today. What is a boundary and how does it relate to celiac disease? Personal boundaries are the limits and rules that we set for ourselves that are essential if we want to be both physically and emotionally happy. A person with healthy boundaries can say no to people and not feel guilty about it. For example, a healthy boundary that I have is that I need quiet time to myself every day. So how does this work with celiac disease? 
Well, there are certain situations that put you in danger of eating gluten, like if you are eating at a friend's house or going out to a restaurant that isn't celiac safe, or if you've been offered some food but you can't see the packaging for it. These are all situations where putting our boundaries first can keep us safe from eating gluten. Now, I'm gonna share my boundaries I have around eating just an example, but just remember this by no means needs to be ones that you have to have. Everyone's different, so everyone's boundaries will end up being different. My first one is I don't accept any food from anyone that I can't see the packaging of first. Unless they're a fellow celiac. This is a boundary that I've needed to put in place because of experience unfortunately. I once accepted what was supposed to be a gluten-free red velvet cake from a neighbour that they'd baked and turns out it wasn't gluten-free. So. Only a certain few people can cook for me. Put your hand up if you've ever been to someone's house and you are so worried that the food that they've given you isn't safe and you feel so awkward and embarrassed about the whole situation that it just ruins the night for you. This boundary isn't necessarily because I've been gluten this way, but more because I just really hate feeling stressed about if the food in front of me is gluten free, that it ends up ruining dinner anyway. Number three. Don't take risks at restaurants. This is another one that I've learned from experience, but the easy way to avoid this is just always be the person that chooses the restaurant. Having boundaries is a big part in keeping me safe and feeling positive about eating, but it's not like these just came into place without me feeling guilty about it. It does feel super awkward when someone asks you to come around for dinner and you just say, no thanks. <laughs> But you do get used to it. I certainly have. <laughs> Basically, it's just a journey of learning how to put yourself first, which isn't easy, so don't be worried if it takes you some time. A good thing to do is write down some of the boundaries you have or want to have around eating. And remember, these don't have to be set in stone forever. They can change due to situations or people that you're with. Next topic, flatting. As if learning to live with a bunch of different people isn't difficult enough throw a dietary requirement into the mix. As you probably already know, cross-contamination is public enemy number one when it comes to celiac disease. But unfortunately, it's not something that people think about that often unless they have dietary requirements. So how do you explain this to flatmates without sounding like the most annoying person to live with? My advice is to get that information in early and clearly. Communication is key. It doesn't have to be a long-winded explanation, it could just be something like this. I have celiac disease, which means I can't have any gluten at all, not even a crumb, or I'll get super ill. If it's okay with you guys, I'm gonna claim this cupboard and the top of the fridge shelf for my food, and I'll have my own utensils, cutting boards, and pans so you guys don't have to worry about cooking with gluten. I found people are generally really understanding when you explain your needs in situations like this and do try to be really careful around food. Just remember that they aren't living with celiac disease so it's not always in the forefront of their mind when they're in the kitchen. And of course there will be slip ups every once in a while. Here are some practical tips for flatting that I've found useful. Number one. Try to keep your food above everyone else's. This is just purely because of gravity and you don't want any of their gluten-containing ingredients falling onto your food. If you are a toast person, I've heard that toaster bags can be extremely useful so you don't have to buy a whole new toaster. Number three, if possible, try to get everyone to stay away from the fan bake setting in the oven just because that can spread around lovely contaminating particles. But if you can't do that, you can always cover your food with tinfoil when you're cooking in the oven. Number four, label your chopping boards, wooden spoons, and anything else that you don't feel comfortable sharing. If they use them anyway, hide them in your room. This also goes for labeling things like butter or Nutella or spreads that you don't want anyone double dipping their knife into. And number five, always have a spare frozen pizza in your freezer for impromptu flat takeout nights, just so you don't feel left out. The last thing I wanted to chat about with you guys today is coming to terms with all these changes as a new celiac. You might be years into your diagnosis and this might not necessarily apply, but you also might still be struggling and that's completely understandable and okay. For me, it really came in waves of realisation of how much of a big life change having celiac disease is. And that's simply because when I was diagnosed, I just was told that I had it told that I need to eat gluten free and sent on my merry way. So I really had no blooming idea of what it was. I think especially in the first six months to a year, there is a huge learning curve as you find yourself in different and hard to navigate situations. And you might feel incredibly frustrated and alone in facing them. Heck, I'm going to my first shared lunch since I've been diagnosed in a couple of weeks and that stumped me. I've decided just to bring a lunchbox full of food for myself. I'll bake cookies for everyone, for everyone to share, but I'll have my own food. I think that's best. But the thing that I want you to keep in mind is that it does get easier. There are definitely a lot of tricky parts, but you learn quickly on how to adapt. 
naturally there'll be mistakes and gluttonings every once in a while but just remember to be super kind to yourself and recognize that food is a huge part of life so learning to navigate how to eat differently takes time but your body will love you for it and with that I'm going to end with a few positives of having celiac disease yes there are some number one you get your meal first on an airplane <laughs> Number two, you inadvertently gain a lot of knowledge about ingredients, allergies, and what goes into food. Number three, gluten-free food is only going to get better. I mean, even in the past four years that I've been diagnosed, I've already noticed an improvement. And on top of that, through raising awareness, there's probably going to be a lot more celiacs in the future, which means there'll be more demand for gluten-free foods in restaurants. Lastly, there are so many wonderful celiac communities online. They are always open to listening to your issues. Not your medical issues, I'd save that for a nutritionist or a doctor, but like life issues like what we've been talking about, there's always someone that can relate to you and make you feel like you're not alone. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it in some way useful. This video was actually originally made for the Celiac NZ conference, which was virtual this year due to lockdown in Auckland, I believe. Was it supposed to be in Auckland? Yeah. I unfortunately didn't get to go because it was throughout the night time over here in the UK. But if you did go, please let me know how it went. I'd love to hear about it. Anyway, that's it for me for this video. Let me know what you'd like me to make a video on next. I will see you in the next video. Bye!